So I think we should talk about the third feature that is another uh, kind of game changer for people that like to configure and they like to have the possibility of different audio modes. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us what this is about? Okay, so that is actually called um, dual speaker preset. So let's talk about what that is. So the, what this allows you to do is like in my home, um, there's, uh, there's, I have a 75 inch TV, which is what the camera's projected at right now. And normally I use that during the day or when the kids when we want the lights on. And I also have a 12 foot sliding door. And during the day, of course, the curtains are open because this kind of has an ocean view. So curtains open, flat panel TV is going to have a major impact on the sonics in the room. At night, when I close my heavy blackout curtains and I drop my 120 inch screen, that has a major impact on the acoustics. So before, when I rented Odyssey, I could run a full Odyssey setup and make my adjustments for um, for the for the uh, the uh, the daytime viewing, and then I could go in and run another Odyssey using a multi EQ app for my nighttime. But every time I wanted to switch, I had to go back into the app and reload the configurations from the app into the uh, receiver or reload it from a USB. That's kind of a, it can be done, but it's it's kind of a hassle. Now you can do it from a, um, I, a button push. So basically by pushing one button on the remote or discrete code or control system, it will switch between those two. The next scenario you could use is um, I play a lot of, sometimes I'm up here by myself and I may want to make a perfect sweet spot, which only for me. I do the mm -hmm. eight you still want to do your eight positions of Odyssey measurements, but then I go in and I make this thing, I may turn up the surrounds a little bit more because where they're located, um, I want, it'll sound better to me. But if I use that same thing, and when, I, when people are sitting on my 12 foot couch, the person closest to that other surround sound is going to get his, that rear surround may get his head blown off. So I may have to adjust that so it's comfortable for everybody on the couch and they all get a great experience. I can save both of those. Um, me watching movie by myself mode and me having a party or Super Bowl mode or, or family movie night mode. And I can save both of those. Um, the other cool thing you could do too, is you can do a full range EQ versus just EQing uh, at, at and below the room transition frequency. Oh, and you can instantaneously compare which one you like better. Exactly. Yeah. And on top of that, um, let me give you a, another scenario. We have been, Gene has been on a war path about, <laughs> about, center, about the center spread going away. Way, well, went away. Yeah. Ah, I'm going to kill you. Ah. And he's give yelling at Yamada, Give it back. He's yelling at Dobie. He's yelling at Yamada san over at, uh, at Dennis. And he's yelling at everybody. Why don't this work? So, so this is another solution for you. So what you can do is, remember, if you look at the assignments, you can do speaker configurations, amps, levels, crossovers, everything. So you can go in, and if you if there's too much center, you can make it. Um, I want to use pick your pick your up mixer, you know, RO3D, um, Adobe Atmos, whichever one you want to do. I could take I could turn the center down or take the center out, change mm -hmm. the bass adjustments, change the crossover adjustments, use a different EQ setting. And save that and make that my ultimate uh, um, two-channel up mixer. And then I can do a regular surround sound calibration and have a traditional ultimate surround sound theater mode. So you can actually go in and customize like that. So, yes, it's gone. But this solution allows you to do – gives you so much flexibility. It's, it's unreal. And – like I said, it's simple to do. You can do it. There's multiple ways to do it. I'll show you. You can switch from the menu. You can switch from the um, the options menu. When you hit the options button, another, a, a smaller menu comes up. Or you can um, use our quick select buttons. You save it. Um, you do all the configurations, and you save it under quick select number one. And then you do another one, and you save it for quick select number two. So you can actually you, – so you have the ability to do that. So lots and you of can ways. still save you can still save these files to a USB drive too, right? Exactly, exactly. All we're doing is giving you the ability to do it um, this way. So if I go back into this receiver, right? If you look above that preamp mode, like right now, you'll see a, a parentheses right next to the den, and it says preset number one. So what I'm yeah. doing is I can go in here and I can say, okay, um, amp assign 
uh, preset number one, I want it to be uh, 13 channels with a top surround and a, a center height. I want my, um, so, so that's the one that I, that I wanted to do. Or I can do um, uh, no surround music mode, whatever I want to do, right? Mm -hmm. And then I would save that. Now, when I go back here, you'll see that it says um, at the bottom, it says speaker preset. So mm -hmm. now I want to switch from one to two. Now, when I go back here and I go back to amp assign, you see at the top, it says speaker preset two next mm -hmm. to the Denon. When I hit amp assign, I got it in preamp mode. So, nice. so I can have one running in preamp mode and one running in... um. In a in Amplify, like you talked about, your two, your two uh, yep, rooms. and then EQ them separately. Yeah, yeah. Or I can go in so, here if I wanted to, and I could put in a different a different thing. Like I can go in and and uh and we'll do the other thirteen channel. So I can go in here and do this one. So so which so I can pick, you know. So it's it's kind of cool. Now so go, before, go back to go back to preset one where you had it at 13.1 because I wanted to show I wanted to point out something that I that okay. I noticed okay so let me let me clear this so in in this receiver it's got 11 amplifier channels but it's got 13 channels of processing correct exactly exactly so hold okay, on a second so, so in this one you would basically do like a um I would okay so let's go in here so preset yeah, number preset one, one. And then we come out of there, and then we go back up here under preset number one, and I hit amp assign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so check this out. Somebody at Denon was listening when I complained. <laughs> because in the past, when you had more channels of processing than you have than you had internal amplification, mm -hmm. that pre-assign would go to like surround channels. Yeah. And now, now you can change it. You can change now it. you have it to the front channels. I can change which is it. Which awesome. Oh, you so can I change can, it. Yeah. So front, this is incredible uh, because now, uh, now you have full preamp capability. It's disconnected from the amp. It will not clip. It will not have that distortion I was talking about. Yeah. You could yeah. run a really heavy loaded amp to the front channels and then still exactly. use the internal amps mm -hmm. in the Denon receiver. This is this is really freaking awesome. Yeah. I have to tell I you, mean, I'm excited about it. I mean, we, it. we keep trying to listen um to to uh to people to try to enhance and can and continue to improve the performance um and i think this is kind of just another example um of that and and like i said um most people what, what they're going to do is they're going to have one configuration for both but they'll probably go in like eugene you would probably say um you would have say you're using this configuration for everything right because you mm -hmm. like it and then you were like man i really hate that center channel uh, you would probably go in and uh, after you leave here, go over to the other one and turn um, one of the other settings and turn the center channel down because right. or or turn everything else up and, turn you know, to get the sound that you want it. So you would you can go in here, even if you use the same layout for preset one and preset two, you, it's it could be EQ different. It could be um, the different things like the crossover settings. I can go in here to the configuration. And if I go into configuration. I can literally change the crossover settings or the size of the speakers um, yeah. or whatever I want to do um, in here. So all the different features are available here. So if I go back into, um, so say we go to levels, um, there's a level for this. So I can turn the, the center down. So I can really go in and get it exactly the way I want it. And as long as it's under that preset one parentheses, everything that you change here from the crossover to um, the crossovers, do you want them to be individual or all? What crossover frequencies do you want? Do you want the L do you want bass and LFE together or not? All that stuff can be adjusted. So I you want know? to address this comment because it's incorrect. Um, yeah. When you're running 13 channels and not turning off the preamp mm -hmm. or not going into preamp mode, you still have preamp disconnect on those main channels or any channels you want. It's whatever channels you want to assign for those extra two amplification channels. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really, I want people to understand this. So if you're using the 11 internal amplifiers of the 6700, you still need a two channel amp to get 13 channels of processing. Mm -hmm. You could assign which channels you want that to be the preamp disconnect mode or which, yeah. which channels you want to amplify externally. 
Yeah, exactly. So, so, so what he's, yeah. So basically when I said all or nothing, that means if you're using like right now, I am using all the amplifiers, right? Right. And I have to have a preamp. If I go to the preamp mode, they're, it, they're all off. There's all or nothing. So, so yes. it's either all the amplifiers on with a second external amplifier or, you know, all the amplifiers off and you got to get amplification. You got to get amplification for every channel. So that's what mm -hmm. Gene was trying to say. Awesome. Okay. So those are the, those are the three differentiating features. And, and before we move on, I wanted to kind of comment quickly about the center channel thing. I know I kind of harp on this. This is just an issue that I notice when you're up mixing two channel music with the Dolby surround up mixer. This is not a problem when you have discrete 5.1 or above. Mm -hmm. And I did finally get a little bit more information about it. It's not that Dolby necessarily is removing the center spread feature. It's that with the new licensing, if you have a receiver that has height virtualization, it's either you have height virtualization or you have center spread. Currently, you can't have both implemented into a receiver. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to see if Dolby can turn that back on, but even if they don't, you guys have a great solution here where you can knock the center channel down when you're up mixing two channel music through the speaker presets or through all those those other two options that you showed. Exactly. Exactly. So um, it's just we want to give we want to give the people more flexibility. Um, it's always funny whenever we introduce a new mo a new mode. The first question anybody asks is, "Can I turn it off?" You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> look, it it makes it levitates. Can I turn it off? You know, so, 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 so we try to give you, so no one has ever complained about having more controls. Of course, it defaults in a way that um, it sounds great, but um, we always give you the ability to turn it off. 